No secret to the during his administration, the former president lied a lot, like a lot. With that in mind, let's bring in CNN fact checker Daniel Dale to look at his remarks tonight. Daniel, what, have, uh, what stood out to you? Anderson, that was more accurate because he was indeed on teleprompter than much of what you'll hear from him at rallies. But it was still less accurate than anything you'll hear from basically anyone else in politics. Just wildly incorrect claims, the claim that ISIS was defeated in three weeks, that he went decades without a war, that no previous president had taken in one dollar from China. These claims are not even close to true. And then there was a, a general narrative about the economy under him. He can say whatever he wants about the pre-pandemic economy, but he suggested that the economy was thriving two years ago when he left office. Look, he left office with the unemployment rate about, about double what it is today. So the idea that the Biden administration did not have to do anything and everything would have been hunky-dory is, is just absurd as well. Um, there's a couple of... I know other moments that played, uh, stood out to you. I want to play one now. Let's listen. The Green New Deal and the environment, which they say may affect us in 300 years, is all that is talked about. And yet nuclear weapons, which would destroy the world immediately, are never even discussed as a major threat. Can you imagine? They say the ocean will rise one-eighth of an inch over the next 200 to 300 years. Anderson, Trump was inaccurate here about climate change, both specifically and generally. This specific claim, he said that they, unnamed people, say the oceans will rise an eighth of an inch over the next 200 to 300 years. That is totally wrong. In reality, the U.S. government's National Ocean Service says this. They say sea level along the U.S. coastline is projected to rise on average 10 to 12 inches in the next 30 years, which will be as much as the rise measured over the last 100 years. But Trump also generally suggested climate change might only affect us in some general way in 300 years. That also is not true. It's affecting us now, as we know, in a whole variety variety of serious ways. And that's not some radical left-wing view. Here's what the Pentagon, the military, said in a report last year. They said increasing temperatures, changing precipitation patterns, more frequent, intense, and unpredictable extreme weather conditions caused by climate change are exacerbating existing risks and creating new security challenges for U.S. interests. And finally, Anderson, nobody is not paying attention to nuclear issues because they're focused on climate change. That's, that's not a real choice. Again, that's absurd. I know there's another moment that jumped out at you I want to play. Gas prices have reached the highest levels in history and expect them to go much higher now that the strategic national reserves, which I filled up, have been virtually drained in order to keep gasoline prices lower just prior to the election. Now, I'll, I'll leave aside this claim about the motivation for Biden's uh, release for, from the Strategic Petroleum Reserve, but it is not true, Anderson, that President Trump filled it up. In fact, if you go to the U.S. Energy Information Administration website and look at the actual data, the reserve had fewer barrels of oil when Trump left office than when he took office. Now, he did propose at one point in his administration that the reserve be filled up with tens of millions more barrels, but he never secured the funding for it from Congress. It never happened. And although Biden has has indeed released a bunch of oil to help keep oil and gas prices down. It is not virtually depleted. It's not empty, as he claimed in a rally in November. It is still the world's largest strategic reserve of petroleum. Yeah, Daniel Dale, appreciate it. Fact-checking. Thank you.